Good morning. Good morning. Once again, I want to just thank you for tuning in uh, for 7 for 7. Amen. 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 Let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father, thank Lord, you, Lord, we praise you. God, we're thankful for who you are and what you're doing in yes. our lives. I ask God that you would speak to us, giving guidance and direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, we've been talking about uh, having the confidence to go through our valleys. Amen. Amen. Um, let's go to the scriptures. Psalms 23, verse 24. Okay. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. David found comfort in God's rod and his staff. Yes, he did. The rod and the staff is there for comfort, Come on. for protection, for direction, for direction, and correction. And correction. Amen. <laughs> and there are those that just, you know, there are people who, hey, everybody wants comfort. That's right. You know, no matter who you are, you want comfort. But the problem is, is that some people, they want comfort, but they won't receive the correction. So they want comfort to stay in their mess. That's right. But God doesn't want to comfort us to stay in our mess. So therefore, he brings direction. He brings correction. Come on, he does. Because we have to think about this. In actuality, um, in in this life that we're living, we are either uh, in a valley. Mm. You know what I mean? Either we're in the valley or we're coming out of the valley. You know, um, in this life. So either you are have just come out of something or you are on your way into something. And you know what? We need God to be with us. Either way we are going, whether you are in the valley or you are headed out of the valley. You still need God to be leading you in that direction that you're going because, you know, it just makes sense that sometimes that we don't know where we're going, but God does know where we're going. We don't know what's ahead of us, but God does know what's ahead of us, you know? And so we need to pay attention to what the word of God is saying and say, okay, hmm, you know what? I just got through here, but where am I going from here? We have to follow Christ. We have to follow God. We've got to allow him to lead, guide, and direct us. Amen. And we need to understand that in Scripture, it speaks of valleys in three different, three ways. different ways. One is poetically. Come on. One is realistically, and right? The and, and other the, is metaphorically. And the other is metaphorically. That's right. So, so, so in the Scripture, we get to experience all three dimensions yes. of a valley, right? And God wants us to grab hold of this because as as as, as you just said, you're either going in and you're coming out. Yep. And if you're coming out, eventually you're gonna go back you in. You're gonna one. go back in one, amen. And so here we find King David, if you will, who wrote the twenty third Psalm and, and what provoked it. You know, he is his his son had just just done an insurrection right. against him, rose up against him, tried to take the throne, yes. took several of his wives. And and yet David, if you will, we have to understand if this wasn't the this was not the first valley no. because he'd already faced Goliath. That's right. right. He'd already been running, running for Saul. Saul, if you will. And so here we find David once again. After he finally made it to the throne. Huh? Come on. <laughs> he finally made it to the throne. Oh, come on. Because sometimes we think once we make it to the throne, once we make it there, we're not gonna go through yeah. nothing no more. No. He 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 he, he finally began to walk in what the promise was. He finally began to walk in his Amen. true purpose. Right. And, and yet there was some more violence. Yeah, and then he was able to write the 23rd Psalm out of his confidence. Amen. From what he had been through. Out of his what? His confidence. Oh. And so, you know, there's a process to our confidence. You know, first the world comes. The word comes. And then faith comes. Mm-hmm. You know, and then here comes the devil. Amen. He tries to keep us from our confidence. And then patience comes, and it goes to work. Amen? Then experience comes, you know? Uh, and then hope comes. Not the hope of the world, but confidence favorable and expectation in God. Amen? A confidence that is favorable and expectant. And God gives you an expectation for what God is going to do. That is all a process. And we go through all of this in the process of from going in the valley and coming out of the valley. 
And you have to know that we need to to look to these things and pay attention that we know that the word of God is going to come and it's going to lead God and direct us. You know what I mean? And the word of God will build up your faith. The word of God will build up your most holy faith in the word. Amen. And so then we know that the enemy is surely is going to come to try to discourage you or mess with your confidence in that process, you know, but then you have to have patience to wait on God to hear from God. You've got to hear from God. Amen. So that you can go to work and do what he's called you to do. And then, you know, you think about what you've been through to that point, you know, the, every valley that we've been through has given us some kind of experience. Amen. And so we have to look at the experience that God has given us and see the pattern of what God is trying to teach us and how to walk in confidence. And then you get your hope back. Amen. And when you get your hope, then you can stand on the word and you can trust him and you can believe you can see once again that that valley is not so deep that you cannot look up and see God. Amen. You know, this is the reality is, is this, you know, you said first the word comes. Come on. You know, and, and, and the word comes, if you will, to give us faith. Faith, yes it does. Because because every man is given a measure of, of faith. faith. So so God has given all of us the, the measure, the of, measure faith. of faith. Come on. But then the word of God comes. Why? Because um, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing by, by the, the word, word of God. God. And so therefore we have to continually hear. It didn't say faith comes by heard. Come on. You know how people used to say heard that? <laughs> No, no, it's not. It's not past tense, <laughs> amen. amen. And it's not. It's not futuristic. But hearing is a continual. It's a continual In other thing. words, we have developed a relationship with God to the degree that we will continually hear His word. Amen. We will continually be in His word, and and then it goes on to say, you know, how shall they hear? You know, without the preached word. Without the preached word, and how shall they preach unless they be sent? Yes. So you have to be submitted to God and, and connected, connected to, to leadership, leadership, and let God speak to you through the man or woman yes. of God and 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 build your faith. Yes. And you have to unstop your ears. You have to be willing to hear what God is that's, saying to the church. That's right. It's a choice. You know what I mean? Because trials are going to come to rock your confidence, but your confidence has to lay in God. Amen. And in trusting in his word. And that's how you build up your hope and your faith and your belief to move forward and, and walk through the valley. It didn't say stop and camp in the valley and just start crying. It says to walk through the valley amen because when you go through something there's a process that takes place while you're going through but you know what don't get weary in your well-doing because god is on the throne amen amen we'll see you next time at seven four seven be blessed